Okay, now we are looking at the last module of engineering science, which is heat. It cost a while to get shut up here. We are almost there. Almost that right? I'm on page 161. <sighs> Okay. Right. So, page 161, background. When solids are heated up, they expand due to the addition of heat, and this energy is heat, and its SI unit is joules. So, it's energy, right? Now, energy unit only is joules. So, temperature scales. Temperature indicates the degree of heat and not the quantity of heat that a substance possesses. So it will tell you like how hot something is, but not how much of that heat is actually there. Um, to indicate the degree of heat, different temperature scales are used, and in this course we will only use the Celsius and the Kelvin scales. You're all been familiar with that, right? Okay, so on the Celsius scale, pure water at sea level freezes at zero degrees and it boils at 100 degrees. Scale is divided up into 100 divisions between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius, meaning you'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 100 degrees. Between the whole numbers, some divisions are made for more accurate readings, exact, uh, example 20.2, 20 20, 35.6, that sort of thing. Okay? Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale is the unit scale for th thermodynamic temperature. On the scale, 0 Kelvin is the temperature at which a body does not contain any energy. This was not obtained practically, although scientists have come very close. And on the Kelvin scale, zero Kelvin corresponds to negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay? The relationship between Celsius and Kelvin, between the freezing point of pure water and the boiling point, both have scales. Between the freezing point of pure water and the boiling point, both have scales. Both scales. Both scales have 100 divisions. Okay? Numerically, Kelvin is 273 degrees greater than Celsius. And all you need to remember for this part here is from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. Okay? So you're going to highlight that part. And then from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, you subtract 273. Okay? Nothing difficult. Some people use 273.15, but for this year, you just need to use 273, okay? So, for example, 7.1. They want you to convert 35 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Now, what we said when you're converting Celsius to Kelvin? So, it will be 35 degrees Celsius plus 273, which is 308 Kelvin. And then if they asked you to convert 305 Kelvin to degrees Celsius, what would you do? Subtract. You would subtract. So 305 Kelvin minus 273 is? Straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And that's how the calculation will be. Nah, like, <laughs> it's, it's never that easy, right? Okay, so expansion of solids on top of page 163. Okay, when a solid body is heated, all its dimensions, its length, area, and volume also increase. Can I understand that, right? So you know like sometimes when it's cold your door like contracts or sometimes when it's hot your door expands like if you have a wooden door and sometimes you try to close it. Some, and sometimes you have to force it and push it right in or sometimes it just slams itself. Same door but you wonder why it's because the heat. Okay? So the, they tell you that when a solid body is heated all its dimensions increase meaning its length, area and volume will also expand and increase. The converse is also true, meaning that if heat is removed, all its dimensions will decrease. So the coefficient of linear expansion. So the coefficient of linear expansion for solids is the change in length 
per unit length per degree change in temperature. That of course divide by that. But that is the definition of the coefficient of linear expansion. So, when a solid is subjected to temperature changes, the length or the change in length will be proportional to the original length and the change in temperature. Okay? So, you see on the diagram that they have there, okay? You have a piece that was originally a length of L1, the bottom bar. Yeah. Well, not the bottom bar, the bar that's the fully solid name. Okay? It was subjected to heat and then it formed L2, the length of the bar when temperature was added. So that dotted line is basically a change in temperature. Okay? Now, they came up with a formula and the formula basically states this. The formula is your change in length. You have change in length is equal to the coefficient change in temperature. This is the formula that we came up with, right? Now what this formula basically means, this is your change in length. This is your coefficient of linear expansion. So your coefficient of linear expansion. This L1 is your original length. And this here is your change in Temperature. Okay? So, this is in Kelvin. This is in Ah, uh, it's a funny thing. It looks like this. L1 originally. So it's small L. Next to a small L. Coefficient. The same? Yeah, that's it. L1. Original L3, right? Why are you acting like my lady is so bad? Come on. L1. It's like a coma. Ah, I see that. I can check it out, right? So the example to 7.2. Okay, example 7.2 is you have two rods, one aluminium and one steel. Okay, so there's one rod, and there's another rod. Okay, they tell you that they are both five meters long. So L1 is five meters, the original length of it. Okay. Um, the initial temperature or the T1 is 192 Kelvin. Then we tell you calculate the length at a temperature of 280. So T2 is 280 Kelvin. 
and you give you the coefficient of linear expansion then the coefficient of linear expansion of steel is equal to 12 times 10 to the 6 and then of aluminium 24 okay this is all the information you give they want to know the lengths and the so the new length okay so what you would do, let's start with steel. Using the formula, we can work out the change in them. Right? Because we know the coefficient, we know L1, which is your original length, and we can work out the change in temperature. It'll be T2 minus T1. Okay? So you just take your higher temperature minus your lower, right? The change in temperature. Okay? So the formula is change in length is equal to coefficient times original length times change in temperature. This here is for steel it was 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times your length was 5 and your change in temperature would be 492 minus 280 and you get an answer of This was the change in it. Right? They want to know the length at the new temperature. So that will be your final length would be equal to looking at how would you do it? Your original right? So well in this instance it will be minus. Why it should be minus? Oh, no, because remember your temperature went from a higher to a lower point. And remember we said when heat is removed, your contacts, yeah. Okay? So this would be 5 minus 0 0.0127, which is minus 7, I mean that. 4.987. Okay, that's for steel. Can you understand what I mean so far then? Okay, now let's do it for aluminium, right? Same thing that we did there, we're going to say your change in length is equal to your coefficient of linear expansion times your original length times the change in temperature, right? This would be 24 times 10 to the minus 6 times 5 times 492 minus... 80, which is 0 0.0254 0 0.0254 meters. So to calculate the final length of the aluminium, it would be uh, 5 minus 0 0.0254, which is 4 minus 0 0.0254. Okay, but anyways, okay. okay. Everybody understand what I did here? Yes. Not difficult, eh? Yeah. Okay, so this is the first formula you need to know. So on page 163, highlight that uh, block. I think he's next, so you can knock on the door and check. Right? Cool? Let's do example 7.3. What do you the other one? 
Okay. Okay. So example seven point three, you have a bar, which is one point zero three four meters long at a temperature of two eighty five Kelvin, and the second length is equal to. 1.034 meters at It's a mistake you know? okay. The second length was supposed to be 1.029 okay? And the temperature 2 is equal to 370 Kelvin Calculate the value of the coefficient of the linear expansion Now what's our formula? Right? The formula is your change in length is equal to coefficient of linear expansion multiplied by your original length multiplied by your change temperature. Okay? <clears throat> we can solve for this because we know the change in length because it will be that minus that. And we know this because it's that minus that. And we know this because it's that. So we can solve for that, right? So if we are to rewrite this, alpha will be equal to a change in length all over your original length multiplied by your change in temperature. So this would be 1.034 minus 1.029 all over 1.034 times 370 minus 280. I'm assuming even if we did it the other way, it would still be the same answer. Mm. So if you did it from uh, shorter to longer, it's still still constant because the everything will just cancel. Just cancel. You're just looking for the differences in value. Yeah. So it you won't come out as negative because you'll always take a higher value minus sure. Yeah. times 10 to the oh. okay can you give me as the zero <laughs> okay. and the units for this is per Kelvin so your, your units when you're writing it you're writing with the stroke <coughs> Kelvin okay that's the units of it. And that's how you would have solved for that. Not bad. Right? Please make sure you take up this example because the textbook, I don't know how they got to the same answer, but they did everything differently. I don't they didn't even write the question properly. But anyway, that's the story. Times ten to the one eighty five. Yeah, because yeah, your decimal moved one. So you see your one move to the for your one it's here. So if you look at it, it moved one oh. left. So okay. yeah. 
Sei massa, senti. Senti, yeah. senti, senti. senti. Let's get to the hard ones now. <laughs> you see, it's, it's not bad, right? You see this one general formula? Everything else is similar to that. Like when, so we looked at length, remember when, when, I, when I said that um, if an object is, is heat related to an object, it's length, area, and volume increase. So this formula is for length. There's a formula for area, there's a formula for volume. But it's the same formulas for all, right? Only thing, the coefficient of expansion changes. You get a coefficient of area expansion, coefficient of volume expansion, right? You're gonna, well, they don't call it that. They call it cubic. You see. Bye bye. Can you hear Right. So now on page 164, right? You don't need to worry about how these formulas were derived. It's fine, you don't need to know that. What I want you to know is, see on top of page 165, right? On top of page 165, they tell you this. Can you all see that, right? Okay. This here is your coefficient. Coefficient of area expansion is two times the coefficient of linear expansion. Remember, we just did linear coefficient of linear expansion now? Huh? Yeah. It's to get the coefficient of area expansion, it's two times that. And the formula for area, so that would just be your change in area is equal to the coefficient of area expansion multiplied by your original area times the change in temperature. So you're going to highlight the two formulas in the block on uh, page 165. I'm assuming these aren't given to us. Then I must check the data to that. But see guys, it's not difficult there. Eh? Mm. This is the exact same formula as the last one. Only thing we were dealing with length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're dealing with area. So like I said, Change in area will be equal to right here is coefficient of area expansion instead of coefficient of linear expansion multiplied by your original area times the change in temperature. Here we have because it's a linear expansion, change in length is equal to coefficient of linear expansion multiplied by original length times the change in temperature. Okay, you can see that right? Okay. And then this is how you will get your coefficient of linear expansion. These are I'm really going to the, the formulas you need to know and how to use it there because how they get to it, they don't ever ask you that. Okay, so my main concern is you need to know how to use these formulas. So example 7.4. Example 7.4 tells you that you have a brass sheet of 500 millimeters square. Another thing for, bra for millimeters square, right? 500 millimeters square. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean partly that, right? But the number that they give you needs to also be square. If they tell you. Because they, it's the same thing as saying the dimensions are 500 by 500. Yes? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, remember like how in the other questions we did some of the other ones mm -hmm. when they gave you the area they'll say or they'll give you 40 by 50 mm -hmm. or something like that. Right? Because most of the stuff we deal with the square, they'll say 500 whatever units square. You need to square the number that they give you because that's how you work out the area. So the, the length of it is 500. It's supposed to be a square, right? Yeah. This is 500 and this is 500. To get the area would be 500 times 500 or 500 squared. Okay? Yeah. Remember that, right? Uh, they also tell you that it is 500 millimeters squared at a temperature of 280 Kelvin. It has a linear coefficient. You need to get used to the name and what the symbol looks like because then you can mess it up, right? Because you could be reading this and seeing, okay, 500 millimeters square, you know, area. Then when you read the part where they tell you linear coefficient, you write it down with this symbol and you carry on working. But it's not true, right? The linear coefficient of expansion is 20 times 10 to the minus 6 per Kelvin. Calculate the increase in area if the temperature increases to 399 Kelvin. So, how would we do that? This is our formula. Okay? Change in area is equal to your coefficient of area expansion times your original area times your change in temperature. They want to know, calculate the increase in area. So they want to know this. How much did it increase by? We can work this out. Yes? Because we know the linear coefficient. It's two times that will give you that. We know the original area because it's 500 squared. And we know the change in temperature, it will be 399 minus 280. You're all with me? Okay, so let's work out the coefficient of area expansion, which is 2 times that, which is 2 times 20 times 10 to the minus 6, which is 40. Right? Yes. Okay. Now we just need to substitute. So your change in area is equal to your coefficient of area expansion multiplied by your original area multiplied by your change in temperature. So your coefficient is 40 times 10 to the minus 6. Your original area is 500 times 500 or 500 squared. And your temperature is 399 minus 280, which is 1190 millimeters squared. Do you understand what we did again? Anybody is confused with what I did? Anybody need me to go through it again? So, will they ever give you the area, the efficient area expansion? Or will they always give you the linear? No, they give you the, that as well. Yeah. So, what they'll do, they'll tell you, right? Mm. Um, say that this questionnaire is a brass sheet. Mm. Okay? At the back of your, your question paper, you'll have your data sheet. And you'll have something called a constant sheet. So a constant will have your value of your gravitational acceleration. It will have the density of some of the substances because remember we use that for hydraulics and stuff, right? It will also have the coefficients for linear area and cubic expansion for certain materials. So what you'll have to do, like for example for the brass question, like this one here, when they ask you to calculate the change in area, you will have to go to your data sheets or the formula sheets, um, <coughs> constant sheets. You will have to see coefficient of area expansion for brass. You take the constant from there, you put it here. Okay, unless they want you to work here, then they won't give you the value. You will obviously have to work towards it. Okay, but when we're doing passive papers, you'll see. Okay, but for now, this area is okay. Yeah. Not bad, right? Mm -hmm. They're still waiting for the. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. No, <laughs> okay, 
Let's do another example. I was checking N6 maths, the central is in N6 maths. Don't ask me how, but central is in N6 maths. Must be that class. Example 7.5, what do they tell you here? They tell you at T1 equal to 295K, the dimensions of a square metal plate, see like how they gave it now, they gave it 350 by 350, okay? So your area 1 is 350 by 350. And then they gave you the new dimensions where at T2 equal to 400 Kelvin, the dimensions are now 351 by 351. Calculate the coefficient of linear expansion of the metal. Now, which symbol is coefficient of linear expansion? Alpha. Alpha. Right? So that's what we need to work towards. So looking at the question. Okay, so our formula that we would use with the associated with this stuff is your change in area is equal to your, your coefficient of area expansion multiplied by your original area multiplied by your change in temperature, right? We know the change in area, A2 minus A1, yes? Right. <coughs> we don't know this value. We know A1 because it's just that. We're not changing temperature because it's 400 minus 295. Mm -hmm. So we can solve for this. <clears throat> Solving for this value, we can use this formula to solve for your linear coefficient. You know what I understand? Yeah. Understand the concept of how we're going to get to our answer there? Yeah. So this here, you're changing area. Okay, what is this value? 350 times 350. And then somebody works 350 times 350. One, two, two, five hundred. One? Two, two, five hundred. And then three fifty one? One, two, three, two, or one. Two, three, one, two, three, two, or one. Yeah. Zero, one. Okay. So your change in area is going to be your greater area minus your lower area. So it's one, two, three, two, or one, minus one, two, two, five hundred. Equal to seven zero one. Yeah, I'm going to put the whole thing right there. Then this value here is one two two five hundred, and your change in temperature is four hundred minus two nine five. So therefore, your value of your coefficient of the um, area expansion is. Hey, can I understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not difficult. Mm -hmm. This is bankers for the test. Is that G? If you doing that first, let's just say they gave you the linear equation, the linear <coughs> equations, and instead of putting that formula, you just substituted that other side formula into there, right? Would that be wrong? Let's hear into that. Yeah. So, no, it's fine. Is it a three to give it to you? One. What did you get? One eight three four point eight seven. One eight three four point eight seven. Just need to know the number. Just be right. No, 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 54.500 times 10 to the minus 6. Right? Now that we worked out that, what can we do with it? We can put it in the, put it back in that equation, right? Yeah. So coefficient of any expansion is equal to 2 times linear expansion, right? So your linear expansion is equal to that divided by 2, which is 54.500 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by 2, which is 
Now, let's get a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Curve wall. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So, remember, okay, I'm going take it out there. Yeah. So, remember, we looked at linear, we looked at area, and what was the one more thing I told you? Cubic. Cubic, Cubic or the volume. volume yeah. Right? So for that one, this is where the chick comes in, right? Ready for it? Yep. All of it? Uh -huh. okay. This symbol here represents, like a wire, eh? It represents the coefficient of cubic expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now, this is where the chick comes in, right? This is just three terms. Okay. And then the formula is still the same like how the other one would be. Okay, so this here is the coefficient of cubic expansion. So if anybody can guess what would be the formula for how we would get change in volume? The change in what of that thing? Mm -hmm. Change in volume. Then, um, like how these other formulas work? Oh, then, uh, coefficient. coefficient of cubic expansion times time your original volume yeah. times your change, change it. Time to change. That's it. Not bad. Okay, all together there. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let's do an example. So, example seven point six tells you that a spherical container has a volume of one meter cubed. So your initial volume is one meter cubed. Calculate the increase in volume if your temperature increases by ninety Kelvin. So they gave you the change in temperature, 90 Kelvin. And the linear expansion, if um, the linear expansion coefficient is equal to 17 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, Kelvin, right? So, 
They want you to work out the change in volume. They want you to work out this. So what we need to work out this, we need to know this, this, and this. We know your original volume. We know your change in temperature. We need to work out this. But how we work out this? We use this. Right? So your coefficient of cubic expansion is two times linear, which is two times seventeen times ten to the minus six. See, there was a check, there was a test there. <laughs> See, you're paying attention, you're paying attention. Right? Which is three times that. Right? So what's your answer? 51 times 10 to the minus 6 per health. Right? So your formula is your change in volume is equal to your coefficient of cubic expansion multiplied by your original volume multiplied by your change in temperature. So this here is 51 times 10 to the minus 6. Your original volume is 1. Your change in temperature is 90. So your answer is 4.59 times 10 to the minus 3. 4.59 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. So that means that the volume increased by 0 0.00459 Example 7.7 Take out the set Example 7.7 So example 7.7 reads that A cast iron block in the form of a right rectangular prism has dimensions of 40 by 50 by 60 Okay, so uh, It looks something like that, right? So 40 by 50 by 60. Right? Um, the coefficient of linear expansion is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 6 per Kelvin. Calculates the volume. Oh, no, this temperature is yeah. 290. 290. Calculate the temperature at 400. Uh, okay. The volume. Hmm. Okay. okay. How would you do this? They want to know the volume at 400. So you'll work out your change in volume and you'll add it to your original volume. Because remember your temperature went from 290 to 400, so it expanded. If it expanded, your length, area, and volume increases. You all remember that, right? Okay, so the volume of this first leg is equal to length times breadth times height, which is 40 times 50 times 60, which is... Right. Your change in volume is equal to. So we need to work out our coefficient of cubic expansion because we were given linear. You are understanding that part, right? Yeah. Okay. But um, so your forty is not fifty and sixty. Debtors for me mm -hmm. needs to work. But the answer you got in should be meters. So are we supposed to convert it to meters or no I tell you for this one you don't have to. Okay. As long as your temperature is in Kelvin. Yeah. Because your temperature, this Kelvin needs to cancel with this. Okay. okay? Your your 
dimension units is fine because it's still going to come up to whatever you're looking at with it. Okay. So this is 3 times 9.8 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay. Taking the get you all with me there. Yes. Okay. Change in volume is equal to your cubic expansion multiplied by your initial volume multiplied by your change in temperature. This would be 29.4 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 120,000 multiplied by 400 minus 290, which is 8.0 there that was the change in volume but now your volume at or your volume 2 is equal to your change in volume plus your initial volume because this expanded okay let me let you see your initial volume plus your change in volume if your temperature went from 400 to 290 you would subtract. Because your temperature went from a lower to a higher, heat was added, the object would have expanded. Okay? So this here is 120,000 plus 388, which is 120,388.08 meter cubed. Everybody understands? Hydraulics, mm. very few formulas, not difficult at all. Okay. This is very few formulas, not That's a surface tension of That's a specific drop. And remember, that's for liquids. Yeah. You'll see when we're looking at volumetric expansion of liquids yeah. on page 170, we're going to discuss okay. you know, that because these are solid mm -hmm. like steel material, you know. Mm -hmm. That's so why I'm asking so because if you put it in the fridge and put it on the glass part, it always expand. Yeah. yeah. Never understood that. That's surface tension. Perfect. Try to see it. Okay. Can I leave for the last example? Can I take out the set? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now 
Right? This next example is the next one because it's basically a combination of everything, right? Next, example seven point eight. Celsius. Yeah, it's 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 in it's, it's units is in per temperature. So you know that whatever calculations you're doing now, you won't use Kelvin, you will use also the Celsius. There's no standard units as such. It's 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 per degrees temperature or per temperature. But you just need to make sure that you are consistent in whatever you are doing. Okay. So this is Australia, right? They got a steel place. Which has dimensions of 100 by 50 by 22 centimeters. Okay? It's heated from 25 degrees to 290 in a furnace. Okay? So obviously its length, area, and volume is gonna increase. Coefficient of linear expansion of the steel plate is 18 times 10 to the minus 6 okay? per degree Celsius. Calculate the expansion in the length. No, man. It's the expansion in the side of the plate of length 50 centimeters. So they want to know the change in length of that 50 centimeters. So how are you doing? This is where you come. You're going to tell me how to do it. <laughs> Right? Here's the first formula which says that a change in length is equal to your linear, your coefficient of linear expansion multiplied by your initial length multiplied by your change in temperature. So this here is 18 times 10 to the minus 6 times 50 times 290 minus 25. Remember, this unit is in per degree Celsius, so we can use our temperature in degrees Celsius. If this was a Kelvin, what we would have had to do? Convert these to Kelvin. Okay? Make sure you don't understand. It's very easy to do that. Because you can go into the paper, go in the back of the sheet, find okay linear expansion, this, 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 you put it back in. But if you got this in Kelvin and this in Celsius, can I get it wrong? Yeah? So, yeah. keep a look out for that. That's the answer. B asks you to what they ask you to do. 
Calculate the area of the 100 centimeters by 50 centimeters side at 290 degrees Celsius. They want to know A2. Okay? Your area at 290 degrees. So when, after you expand it, what is the area of the 100, this top shape, basically the 100 by 50? Okay? Okay. So, how are we going to do that? We're going to have to work on the change in area and add it to the original area. Yeah. And that will give you an area at the new temperature. Cool. So, first thing we need to do is actually get our coefficient of area expansion. And that's equal to what? Two times. two times your linear coefficient, which is 2 times 18 times 10 to the minus 6, which is 36 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. Right. Then your change in area is equal to the coefficient of area expansion multiplied by your initial area multiplied by your change in temperature. So this is 36 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 100 times 50. Why 100 times 50? Because the question asks for that side, okay? Multiplied by 290 minus 25, which is... So this is forty seven point seven centimeters square. So your area two is equal to area one plus the change in area. Area 1 is at 100 times 50, which is 5,000, right? Which is 5,000 plus 47.7, which is 5,047.7 centimeters square. Is anybody confused about what I did there? Yeah, the five thousand to the twenty. Yeah, the hundred times five hundred fifty. That's the one that was just to work out. Yeah, that's your initial area. Initial. What about the twenty two? You don't account for it. No, so they only ask for the area of that one shape. That side, they don't want. Yeah, they don't ask for the other shapes. The twenty two comes into play okay, with the initial for area you. And how much are they there? That's, That's portion extended, not the whole not thing. Not the whole thing. Because oh, okay. the whole thing would be volume. Okay. So we, we're going to do that oh, part okay, now. Okay, okay. So they want to know the increase in volume. Okay. So increase in volume is not the, the final volume. They just want to know the change in volume. Okay, how much did it increase by? Mm -hmm. So, see, okay? <clears throat> Your initial volume is equal to length times breadth times height, which is 100 times 50 times 22, which is 110,000 centimeter cubed. Okay? Your coefficient of cubic expansion is 3 times linear, so it's 3 times. 18 times 10 to the minus 6, which is 10 to the minus 6. Yes? Okay. And then your volume, change in volume is equal to your coefficient of cubic expansion multiplied by initial volume multiplied by change in temperature. So this is 54 times 10 to the minus 6 times 110,000 times 290 minus 25, which is 
Yeah. 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 Because looking at the formula, we didn't know the, the value of this. And well, we could have just substituted for that, but I'll watch that. You'll see why, right? The question they asked you next the percentage increase of volume. How do you work that out? Percentage increase for the volume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you divide your um, the increase by the, you, you, you take your change, change, your change over divide. your original length yeah. or original volume and you multiply it by 100%. Yeah. Okay, so this would be 1574 over 20 over 110,000, which will give you a fraction, right? And you multiply that by a hundred to give it a percentage, which would be one point four three one. One point four three one. Uh, uh, yeah, it expanded by a lot. It expanded by one point one and a half percent. A lot. In the bottom of page 168, you see important formula. Can I let the dates basically a sound that captures all the ones that you had as before? Does or is anybody confused about anything we did here? Yes? Compared to every other calculation we did, this is uh, it's actually nicer. They like to ease your off nicely because they know maths are difficult. Okay, any questions on what we did? By tomorrow, I should be done with engineering science. And then we're done. No, maybe too sure. I should be done with heat. And then we're done with engineering science. Which is nice. Because for engineering science, it gives you enough time to learn. And get the A. Any questions? No questions? Ah.